Baltic, because of the preser preservative qualities of uh, water that is, for most of the year, quite low temperature. And it also is very low salinity. So this means that a lot of the organisms that would eat the, the wood and other organic material uh, in other parts of the world, they don't survive, they don't live in the Baltic. And so the majority of a ship is made out of large quantities of, of wood, and so the majority of the ship's still there. It's broken up, but it's still there. The Baltic is unique uh, in that it combines uh, ex uh, probably what some of the best conditions to preserve wrecks with uh, a lot of history. The Baltic has always been uh, a crossing point, a meeting point, a trading point, and, and also, of course, uh, many wars have been fought here. And all the wrecks from all the centuries are extremely well preserved. So we have a, a, a sort of a confluence between there are a lot of wrecks and they're preserved. Diving in the Baltic Sea, I've been diving all over the world and been filming all over the world, but the Baltic Sea is, is very unique in, in the sense that you have such an untouched uh, environment. You can't find that somewhere else. You can find it in lakes, but you can't find it somewhere else in, in the ocean. So wreck diving in the Baltic Sea is totally unique. I think the Baltic is probably the greatest repository of maritime archaeological um, assemblages, material, source material, data, whatever. It's the greatest repository of information for the archaeology of previous millennia. It probably contains the remains of ships and boats, certainly back to the last thousand years, but probably, although we've yet to find them, for the, for the millennia before that. So in terms of understanding human activity on the coasts and at the sea, uh, the Baltic is of key importance on a worldwide scale.